Hi, and welcome to another of our webinar series. It's the five levels of business advisory. And this is particularly pertinent given the talk recently around the world about the move from compliance to advisory. And uh, we were attending a recent Zero Roadshow where they said one of the biggest, five biggest challenges facing the accounting profession was making sense of advisory. So I hope we can bring some clarity to that today. Um, and uh, you're really, really welcome to join us on the journey. Now, uh, we're using Zoom, so for those of you who've got any questions, um, please ask them and we will get to them as, as soon as we can. Amy's here and she's gonna be moderating. She's actually uh, got Steve's screen rather than Amy, uh, her own screen. Steve is on Amy's screen for some reason. Um, so if that's a little bit confusing for you, uh, don't worry. Um, so if you've got any questions, please ask. If you've got an issue or anything, just, uh, just raise your hand and we will make sure that Amy comes to you and, and tries to sort out any queries you've got. So let's get started. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Ainsley Damery. I'm the CEO of Clarity. Uh, we're a fintech startup that's using the power of blockchain, artificial intelligence, and machine learning to create a global advisory platform that bridges the gap between small business owners and their accountants, helping both to grow successfully. Um, I'm joined by Steve Brigginshaw, the CEO, and Amy Hayes, uh, who's uh, our head of getting stuff done. And, and um, she's unfortunately not on screen, but um, Steve, if you could just ha have a quick introduce yourself and say hi. Yeah, hi everybody. Thank you, Ainsley. So as Ains mentioned, I'm the COO, Chief of Ops here at Clarity. Great, so um, just a little bit of background into us and uh, how we've come to Clarity and to give you a little bit of context. Um, we're both accountants, uh, Steve and I, and we had our own practices. I um, sold my practice actually last year to Chrome. So I, I uh, came from a small business background. Um, my dad left corporate world when I was quite young and it was very obvious at a very early age um, the challenges that are faced by small business owners, um, the, the issues with cash flow and cash flow management, getting customers, looking after team, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, you know, he really struggled at that time to get help and advice because most of his friends were employed and his accountants were really, really focused on just doing the accounts and tax returns. And so it was really, really possibly a lonely place for him. Um, and I certainly appreciate that. Now, at KPMG, of course, it was a completely different story. Uh, you know, big firms getting big level consulting and big level advice and paying lots of money for it. And when I joined here, Bali Tomlin, which was a, a national firm in the UK, um, I was uh, chatting to the partners and they were really up, surprised and upset at the number of customers that were saying, or clients that were saying to them, um, you, don't, you don't care about us. And, and they were really perplexed because they were doing everything that they thought they should be doing for their clients. They were doing the accounts on time, calculating the tax properly, uh, doing it on time, always, um, you know, trying to do their best from an accounts and tax perspective. And that was not what clients were looking for. And actually, we're going to come to a survey in a little bit, which shows a, a recent survey done in the US, which shows the five top things that SMEs are looking for from, from their accountant. Now, I was primarily responsible for driving the change at Teobali Tomlin, the push into a niche advisory firm. Uh, we won a huge number of awards, both nationally and internationally, for that journey. And it was a, a, a tech-enabled advisory firm, in effect, because we were using the power of cloud at a very early stage, and we got to understand how cloud could make a massive difference to us to be able to leverage advisory and to be able to embed advisory through, through all our services. And that's primarily why we um, created Clarity, and it was really to drive and scale advisory, to enable firms to be able to start conversations with clients, to be able to show the value that they can create and to be able to actually help across the board. I'm also uh, proud to be a, an advisory board member of Free to Shine, which is a, a charity that's based in Cambodia that protects girls from being trafficked by keeping them safe and giving them an education. And I'm also a founding trustee of the Cyber Trust. Steve. Yeah, thank you, Ainsley. So my journey, as Ainsley mentioned, I'm a chartered accountant and I have my own firm and I started that in 2015. Uh, but my journey was always very much focused on business advice and helping business owners to grow and improve their business. And that's why I actually started my own accounting firm to do just that. And then after, once I sold my firm, I focused more heavily on uh, coaching, uh, mentoring, being a, a virtual finance director to help businesses all over the world. To, to be able to grow and improve and create their ideal business. And I was lucky enough to write a book with the methodology that I used working with my clients. Uh, and that's the, the book's called The Profits Principles. And I was uh, lucky enough to have that go to number one in the UK and number two in America. And again, I've been very lucky to be able to contribute towards uh, to, as, as an author with the book, The Better Business, Better Life, Better World, with 60 other authors, which is a, a project by Buy One, Buy One Give One which is a, a social uh, enterprise, social movement to help 
Uh, businesses use the power of small to give back to those less fortunate. So I've also been very lucky, as, as you'll find out, that ANC's won very, uh, very, have quite a few awards, actually. Um, I was lucky enough to win a couple of awards myself, and so was my firm. Uh, and, and, and unlike Ainsley, we both speak at different, uh, on different topics all, all over the world. So we're very lucky and grateful to be able to share our message with you. Thanks, Steve. Um, and, and just a little bit of background to, to, to why we get out of bed in the morning. So Clarity is all about making business simple. We, our purpose is to give every business owner clarity. Clarity so that they can build a better business for themselves, a better life for their family and team, and ultimately contribute towards creating a better world. And as an organization, we support the UN Sustainable Development Goals. And if you're unaware, the UN Sustainable Development Goals were signed off in 2015 by 193 world leaders. And if achieved, they would mean an end to extreme poverty, inequality, and climate change by 2030. And when Sir Richard Branson launched these goals, he said it was the first time that a world governing body recognized that it was individuals and small businesses that were gonna change the world and not governments. And so it's really, really incumbent on us and business owners you know, if you're, if you're unaware of the power of a purpose-driven enterprise and how important that is in today's world and how important it is for retaining and keeping staff and clients, then I would really encourage you to, to look into those. And, you know, I would you know, challenge you to just pick one goal and see what you can do with it. Um, we do that through our association and partnership with Buy One, Give One, which is the global giving movement that you talked about. Um, and, you know, that, that's an amazing organization. And I, if, if you want to understand how you can embed giving in everything you do, then, then please let us know and we'll um, put you in touch with the guys from b one one Of course, you can do that also through local charities and, and local work. But Buy One, Give One is an amazing uh, opportunity to do that internationally. And it's a, a very simple way for small businesses to, to give back and, and uh, to, to benefit from the power of small. Now, the agenda that we want to cover today is we want to look at what is business advisory because the term gets bandied around so much. Um, in fact, we were at a conference a couple of days ago and it was uh, an amazing the amount of uh, talk about business advisory. How everybody's, it's become the, biz, the buzzword in the accounting world. Everybody's looking for new revenue streams. So we're going to talk a little bit about what is business advisory, what does it actually mean. Possibly we'll get to what it doesn't include. I hope, um, and we'll also talk to you about what clients are actually looking for from you as, a, as an accountant, and what they really, really want and what they, what they value. We're also going to introduce our model, which is the five levels of business advisory, because like everything else, advisory isn't just yes or no, it's not black and white. There are various uh, uh, you know, ways of, 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 of introducing advisory, and perhaps maybe you're thinking, I'm not really got the skills to be a consultant. Well. Consulting is just one tiny element of business advisory. It might be a very lucrative element, but it's just one part. And we're hopefully going to show you how easy it is for you to implement various levels within your firm um, and to, to, to really drive the firm forward and, and embed advisory in everything that you do. So just a little bit about uh, a brief introduction and, and to put it into a little bit of context. So there are 163 million small businesses in the world, registered small businesses. It's very difficult sometimes to get some of those stats. Um, because different organizations and countries have different rules for, for SMEs. But we know particularly in the UK and in the US, there's 30, in the US, 30 million in the US and there's 5.7 million in the UK, and they represent 99.9% .9 of businesses in both jurisdictions. In fact, in the UK, you know, this, this, the um, SME market accounts for 60% of private sector employment and um, almost 50% of the um, GDP of, of the private sector. So small business is really big business. And we know how important small businesses are to local communities, to economies, international economies. Uh, you know, they drive growth uh, of, uh, of, the of the economies, they drive wealth creation, and they create employment. And so they're massively, massively important. However, we know that the success rates for small businesses are really, really poor. And globally, in effect, the, the same numbers are mirrored uh, pretty much internationally. And we see that only four in 10 businesses generally survives more than five years. And when we go out to 10 years, the stats can vary a little bit, but it's anywhere between one and three businesses that survives 10 years. Now, when uh, Prince Charles spoke to the, the ICAW last year, he said it was accountants that were the ones that were going to drive the change in the world and were really going to change the world. And that's because of our power, our understanding of our numbers and our ability to connect with small business owners and to really make a massive difference on a sustainability at a corporate level and sustainability across uh, every sector of, of, uh, you know, of, of, of the planet. And accountants really have so much innate and inherent abilities that they just need to have that understanding and, ex and I suppose, un you know, belief in themselves 
that they can really, really change uh, small business owners and make a massive difference to the world in, in, in so doing. So, you know, the world is complex, business is complex, and the challenges that are faced by small businesses, let alone the macro levels, so we're just now looking at the, the, the ones that they can keep control of, um, rather than the, the changing uh, sectors and the, you know, the, the regulation and the mass uh, changes that are happening in competition and technology, et cetera. But just at a, at a local level, you know, business is complex and is getting more so. Small business owners are telling us they're drowning in information. They're starving for knowledge from us. And that's really, really important. And I think potentially as a professional, we possibly have overcomplicated business over the years. Potentially, we've overcomplicated numbers. And I think it's really, really important that we actually you know, get back to basics and really help small business owners understand what they need to know. Now, cash, as we know, is a massive issue for growing businesses. Growing businesses and scaling businesses just consume cash. It's the law of business. And startups particularly as well suffer from, from a lack of cash. So cash flow management is critical to the, to the financial well-being and, and performance of a business. And also getting access to the right type of funding at the right time is vitally important as well. And that's really where we can come in and as accountants really, really help small businesses. Now, also we know that Many small businesses you know, have really unreliable uh, financial data. Only 20% of businesses get management accounts, and that's really quite shocking in the, day, in the days now of, of cloud technology and the, the ability for us to be able to help our clients generate management accounts really, really easily. And the understanding of numbers across business is really poor. And I think sometimes we take that for granted because we have the ability to understand numbers and, and what they mean. But small business owners might nod and, and say, yes, 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 yes. But we also sometimes take responsibility for understanding the numbers from them and say, don't worry about that. We'll look after that for you. But we know that successful businesses need to have a really strong grip and understanding of their numbers and how the impact of decisions they make, what effect that's going to have, and how changes in the financial statements are, are explaining what's happening in their business. So they really, really need to understand the numbers and the language of business. And finally, planning. My clients used to spend more time planning their holidays than they did spend than they did in planning their business. And oftentimes, when you talk to small business owners about planning, they say, "Well, I don't know. My business is complex. It's really different. You know, I don't know what's going to happen six weeks ahead. I clearly um, aren't going to be able to know what's going to happen in a year or five years' time." And that's, as accountants, we know that's not the power of planning. The power of planning is giving focus, direction, creating targets making people accountable and giving them action plans. And it's not about that we stick to the plan regardless. It's about creating and thinking about the planning process. And if we imagine building a house, we don't just start with blocks on the ground and see what happens. We do have a picture of that house that we intend to build. It might be that that house changes as we go along. We add extra rooms and we create conservatories and we change the layouts and maybe move windows around. But we, we, we have a picture of, of the house before we start. And it's the same with business. We need to understand where we're going. Otherwise, we'll never get out of the port. Now, the problems and, uh, and issues that are challenged and faced by small business uh, are pretty much uh, mirrored in what we as accountants suffer as well, except potentially and hopefully we have a better understanding of our numbers and we have a better uh, financial data. But we know nowadays that you know, one-man bands in the rooms can set up and can compete with bigger firms through the power of cloud, through the power of outsourcing and offshoring. And they can really, really compete with the bigger firms. And because they're nimble and flexible, they can make more waves and create more um, noise in, 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 in their um, in their areas. And so there's low barriers to entry and there's a massive downward pressure from pricing. And we also see as accountants that we're suffering from a massive change in the regulatory and legislative environment. And not only for ourselves, but also for our clients. And it's really bogging a lot of accountants down. And so they're not really getting to free up their time to spend uh, on areas that clients really, really want them to focus on. And also the massive technological changes and the digitization of tax and that's just not in the UK, that's a movement that's going to be rolling out worldwide, is certainly changing the way small business owners view their accountants and changing the way that they see technology and how that can have a massive impact on, on the service offering and the types of fees that are being charged. And so there's a huge talk and need for new revenue suits within accounting firms. And you know, compliance and the move to advisory is seen as the next step. And it's touted so much by so many industry commentators. But as accountants in practice, we knew how difficult it was to scale advisory. It's a tricky one. It's fine for the managers and partners at the top levels of the firm, but to be able to actually cascade that down through the ranks, to enable your frontline team 
to be able to deliver a cost-effective advisory to every single business owner is really quite a tricky ask. And you might say, well, that's irrelevant, Ainsley, because a lot of small business owners, they don't care about that. They just care about us doing their accounts and tax returns. Well, hopefully we'll, we'll have some eye-opening um, data for you in a, in a little bit. And I think as well, the amount of apps that are out there, there, there are so many going out there. It's really, really tricky to understand and identify what's really, really key. Now, looking at a study that was done in October 2018 in the US, and again, you know, it will be pretty much mirrored in, in uh, South Africa, UK, and Australia and New Zealand. These are the five top things that SMEs were looking for from their accountants. Now, being trusted advisor was number one. And again, trusted advisor be, is such a bandied term. Um, and oftentimes, we don't really understand what that means exactly. But from our perspective, being a trusted advisor is being there as a friend, an intelligent friend, a sounding board, being able to help and mentor and advise and guide small business owners and being there for them when they need you. Responding quickly came in at number two. Um, and again, you know, we know nowadays that we're not just competing against other accountants, we're competing against every other service sector and industry um, that our clients come into contact with. And so quick response times is just becoming such an important element now. And understanding your clients and business and their industry clearly is something that we would expect. Being affordable, interestingly, comes in at number four. And number five is com communicating with them as non-accountants. Now, if we we're able to deliver all those five things, then we're an outstanding firm. But to be able to understand all your clients' industries, to be able to communicate with them quickly and on time, and to do that in a cost-effective manner, means that we really, really need to leverage the power of technology because we're not going to be able to do that with just team members. We need to see what's out there and what cloud applications and what other technology we can connect together to actually give us some help, give us a helping hand and to be able to leverage that technology. And you'll notice obviously clearly that accounts and tax returns don't make that list. Um, you might say, well, of course they don't, but do, you know, have you really thought about that? That's not what clients are valuing. They didn't get into business to do accounts and tax returns and they sure as damn don't understand why you are in business doing accounts and tax returns. That's not what they're looking for. So it's really, really important that we sit down, understand what our customers are looking for, our clients are looking for, understand what they need, and to be able to deliver that to them. Now, um, as an organization, Clarity, we built a, an advisory framework for firms, and our whole uh, platform has been built around an advisory framework. Um, and pretty much, it, it follows a, a similar train of thought from a lot of things. It's understanding where your clients are, are now, understanding where they want to get to, understanding what that gap is, and, and helping them close that gap putting in place management reporting to understand where, they're, where they are on their journey, holding them accountable, having that stick, having those, those rights to actually nag them. And then it's really, really important, and too many people do this, they scale before the business is ready to scale. So it's much, much, it's so important to be better before bigger, to actually get the business right before you actually scale that business. And when it's right, then it's time to actually see how can we make this better? How can we make this bigger? How can we actually um, help the business owner to either stay in the business and continue to make good money whilst allowing them to do the things that they want to do or ultimately to exit? So our advisory framework has been built around the journey from cradle to grave with the client. And uh, we have uh, other webinars on the framework and how you could put that framework into place in, in your practice. And we also have um, a webinar on our advisory process. And again, it's understanding where they are now, where they want to get to putting in management reporting, giving them that support and accountability and helping them then scale the business when it's right to scale the business. Again, that's dealt with in another webinar, but the, these are uh, particularly important when you want to look at uh, using cloud technology and how uh, the, 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 you know, the power behind cloud technology and, and the systems that are in place to help you as an accountant to actually deliver advisory. But today we want to talk about the five, what is business advisory and to get you into the five levels of advisory. Um, so that you understand that it's not just all or nothing and that every person in your firm can deliver an element of advisory at every stage of the journey. I'm going to hand you over to Steve, who's going to take us through those five levels. Thank you, Ains. Right, so as you can see from the graphic, the five levels of advisory has been built in a way so that the, the previous one uh, builds on the next. So it's, it's a step, a stepping uh, approach. Uh, and the, the first one creates that foundation. So you can see here, the first one is awareness. So the, the, the first step of what we are actually trying to understand is where are you now? Uh, where your client, where is your client now? So that's over here. Where do they want to be? 
and then bridging that gap and well, identifying it first and then helping them to bridge it. And the reason that we start at this point is to actually start the conversation. So you may hear people talk about the businesses are actually the, the, the people business that's all based upon relationships. Well, that's absolutely true. And we, we believe the same. And it's the same approach that, that we had in our respective firms and we advocate in any accounting firm is that to have better relationships with your clients, you'll have a better business, they'll have a better business and everybody wins to create a win-win situation. Now, starting that conversation as well is from a, an internal and external perspective. So it's helping your client understand what's going on so they have awareness. So when you have aware of, awareness of something, you can then do something about it. But it's the same for your team and, and for yourself within your firm. Uh, well, obviously looking at your own firm too, this is a great methodology for you to, to, to use for your own firm, but for your clients so that you you actually take the time to look at what's going on in, your, in each of your client's business. and that the whole point of this as well is so that it positions um, the, the, the business owner to have that clear understanding so of where they actually are now and where they want to be. So those are the two fundamental things and then they can bridge the gap with your help, obviously, if they require it. And you, you can look at this as a bit like sat nav for business. When you get in your car, you know, the, the GPS is automatically pinged to calculate where your location is. So you don't need to enter that. So that's where you are now. And then you put in the postcode or the address or point of interest of where you want to be. So it's exactly the same. And then the, you know, the computer in your car calculates the, the best route to get there or gives you some options. And it's the same principle in business. And, and that's how we view this step as it's the foundation for building business advisory in, in, your, in your firm, but also the foundation for having a better and more stickier relationship with each of your business owner clients. And the cool thing is, with this, anyone that you trust within your team to pick up the phone with your clients, they can actually deliver this. So you don't need you know, business experience or knowledge about particular methodologies. Anyone in your team who is skilled with numbers, who can understand, uh, read some information about where they are now, where they're, what the seven key numbers are, help them play with them so, so that they can calculate their ideal future, uh, and then put an action plan together to actually deliver that um, so anyone in your team can do that and the, the cool thing is Ainsley mentioned earlier one of the challenges that is in the industry in, in advisory in accounting is being able to cascade down business advisory services so that it can be scaled up and that we, you know, we each face those challenges in our respective firms and we believe that this is the the right way for any firm to start delivering business advisory services and then to be able to scale it up and your team are the ears and eyes of, of your business and also of your clients because they deal with your clients on a regular basis and they see all of the data. So they're the best position to actually help and this puts the power in their hands to actually help your clients and potentially open some new service lines for you as well. So awareness- It's interesting, yeah. sorry, sorry Steve, it's, it's also really, really interesting, isn't it? When you start having those conversations with clients asking them where they want to get to, automatically that differentiates you as a firm, automatically that positions you in a different place. And just having that, I suppose, understanding and that uh, interest in your clients makes them feel better and makes them think, oh, I actually didn't really think about that. And now you're making me think. And that's, that's really, really powerful for, for, for accountants. Absolutely. And it comes back to what you mentioned earlier with that survey from Accounting Today. Trusted, a trusted advisor is a word that gets used to, or a phrase that gets used a lot. And I don't think anybody necessarily has a clear definition of what that means. And the same as business, advisory has a, a broad substance of what that means. But what we will do for you today is help you understand what business advisory is. But that's, this, this will solve some of those challenges that the, your business owner clients face and build those relationships so that you can, as we said, create those win-win situations and build better relationships. So awareness is the first step and the first level. Yeah. So the, the next level is... Sorry, Steve, just to cut in, somebody's asked that we've skipped through a few slides quite quickly. Um, and, and are they getting a copy of the slides? Well, ab absolutely, you will have a copy of the slides at the end of this. You'll actually get a recording as well. Some of the slides we've skipped through are covered by separate webinars, and we do have recordings of those as well. And we have more of those coming up. So please do get in touch with us if you, if you want some more help with that. Sorry, Steve. Cool. No, absolutely. Thank you, Ains. So we, yeah, we talked about this is the foundation stone, the foundation of business advisory. The next level, the next step is accountability. So what we're doing here is 
so, so essentially very simple process is you're just holding your account, your clients accountable for helping them achieve their ideal business and achieving their goals. And that can be done informally or formally, but the, the principle is making sure that what they say needs to be done or, or the, uh, the, ver the version of the future that they want to create, you actually help them create that. And you don't need to roll up your sleeves and get involved. We'll look at a, a, another level where you can actually do that if you wanted to. But at this point, it's just making sure that your clients are actually doing it. And, and it's simply, it could be a phone call um, once a week, once a month, or you, you could have meetings around what's going on. But the, the point remains the same. It's making sure that they know that they've got someone of a carrot and a stick, or maybe just one of, just, just one of those to, to get the tasks done that they need to get done to create their ideal business, um, then, then they will actually, there's more of a chance that they'll actually complete it. And the cool thing with this is, again, it builds on the previous conversation that you're having. So you started the relationship building with awareness, but with accountability, what you're doing now is starting to collaborate with your clients. And again, building that relationship, becoming more stickier, becoming actually engaged in what they're doing, and they feel that you're a part of their business as well. And the, the cool thing, again, with accountability is you don't need to have done it yourself. So Usain Bolt's um, coach, he, he wasn't particularly a great 100 meter and 200 meter runner, but he coached Usain Bolt to be the fastest man alive. So you don't, you or your team don't need to have done these things to hold accountable your business owner clients. You just need to be able to hold them accountable. So understand what it is that they need to do and then help make sure that they do that. If they, whatever tasks they've set, maybe some tasks need to be broken down into smaller bite-sized pieces, but making sure that they deliver what they're supposed to do when they said they were going to do it. And the same for their team as well, that they need to be held accountable. And effectively, you become a trusted sounding board, um, you know, an intelligent person who's skilled in numbers who can actually help them get to where they want to be. So that's accountability. The next step, and, and Steve, uh, accountability, who, who throughout the firm is going to be responsible for accountability? Who, again, this doesn't, this doesn't necessarily need to be the business owner or the partners or the senior managers of the firm. The front, your frontline team, your team who actually deal with your clients on a day-to-day -day basis, they can hold them accountable. So as I said, it's just a conversation, really is understand, and taking an interest obviously as well, about making sure that they deliver what they're supposed to deliver. So if there's an action plan that's created, you put deadlines on it, they're assigned to a particular person, it's making sure that that deadline is completed by that person. And it's, it's, that's as simple as it gets, really. Cool. The next step, then we start to build more on our accounting, in, uh, accounting knowledge and experience. So th what we're looking here at, at insights at the third level is explaining what is possible and how to actually make some changes. So what we mean here is having a deeper understanding of what's going on in the business from a numbers perspective uh, and what they can actually improve. So it could be that you're looking at the PL, let's say, as an example, or the management accounts. You're, you're, you're looking at comparing some of the numbers, and you may even just be looking at the previous months and that understand, asking questions in terms of, well, why has revenue gone down? Um, what, why has this changed? What can we do to improve this, improve this figure here? Gross profit's not what it used to be. Uh, why is that? So it's about using the existing skills of your team. And again, this can be delivered by your team who have that analytical skill. Uh, and if they're in an accounting firm, the likelihood is that they would have done some form of qualification to get to, to get those skills. Um, and, and then being able to ask those questions and getting your clients to answer them because the, your clients will have the answers. They just need to be asked the right questions. And it's simply simple as, well, why has revenue gone down this month compared to last month? And they will know, they'll be able to tell you. And it's until you prompt them to, uh, think about these things that's why that's the, how they will come up with that information and again once they're aware of it they can say well actually yeah that that's not particularly good or we should do something about it or actually this is great it's an opportunity we didn't realize because revenue has gone up unexpectedly let's see how we can capitalize that on that revenue i'm just using this one example you can look at any number within the management accounts or any number within the seven key numbers of, of the business to be able to uh, use that insight and skill and, and give a, a perspective and thought-provoking 
questions that will help your your business owner clients to move forward and create their ideal future because like we said with sat nav for business sometimes uh, maybe in the car you know if you're sat nav you'll hit some roadworks or some traffic your your sat nav in your car will um, calculate a new route if you, if you have a fancy one or, or alert you to the traffic and then you can then manually calculate a new route it's a similar process with the insights is that what you're doing is understanding what's going on and making adjustments on the fly if they need to be made but it's a deeper understanding of of what is possible and explaining as well what the numbers actually mean because as Ainsley alluded to earlier business owners didn't get into business to read financial statements or to read numbers even whether they love numbers or not they they just don't have the time to do it and that's why they need a trusted advisor to look after the numbers for them making sure that that ties up with everything in their business and going in the right direction of where they want to be. Um, and, and Steve, benchmarking comes in here as well, doesn't it? And understanding how others are performing in, in, in your industry or in, in similar industries or in, in business in general and being able to impart that as an accountant onto your clients. Absolutely. Benchmarking is really, really important tool to have. So you can check compared to your sector, you can comp uh, compare to your other clients as a, as a firm as well, if you're, if you're looking um, from a firm level. Um, rather than a business level where you're looking at your clients' sectors and location. But the, the interesting thing with benchmarking, a slight difference, is that you may not have the answers or your clients may not have the answers, but what you will see is what is possible. So as an example, if one of your clients is, let's say, in the middle, um, the, the, or let's say the third quartile of performance for, let's just say, revenue again, take an easy number, you can see that they're in the third quarter. So you can see that there are more businesses um, a, a, that have a higher revenue growth, let's say, than, than, your, than your clients. So that you don't necessarily know um, what it is that they're doing to improve their revenue but, and have a higher growth than your client. But what you can see is that it's possible. So the, a famous example is when Sir Roger Bannister beat the four minute mile time. Um, before then, nobody thought it was possible. But as soon as, as soon as that was beat, I think within the next six months, another 12 people, it's something along those lines. I don't remember the numbers exactly, but as, some, as they realized that it was actually possible, then more and more people were able to do it because they believed it was possible. And it's the same approach here with benchmarking. You can see that other businesses are having better success in certain areas. It gives you that uh, inspiration and idea and that awareness again that something else is possible and then you can focus your energy there to, to catch up to them. Exactly. And Stephen, isn't it really interesting as well that when we've talked about advisory, that at each level of these, it can be either small or it can be involved or it could be um, at, at a, a, you know, a team level or at a partner level all along the way and particularly with insights. And, you know, it's interesting how we can systemize you thinking potentially, well, how am I, low, uh, you know, how am I frontline team going to have the insights to be able to talk to clients? But Again, as you say, it's about asking the clients a question and not always being the font of knowledge. I think as accountants, we feel the pressure to always know the answer. And we don't know all the answers in business. Nobody does. Um, so just being able to ask the client and involving them and collaborating with them really, really helps with the insights. But interestingly enough, at, at Teobali Tomlin, we certainly tried to systemize this as much as we could. So we used to have Friday lunch and learn sessions where we were, you know, the, the team would take a, uh, one member of the team would take a topic and would impart their knowledge across the entire firm and I think that was really really helpful for the younger members of the team to be able to understand and to gain insights and you know we always as well would have had a junior along with a more senior member at every single meeting taking notes so that not just for the note-taking process but for them to be able to understand what's going on and to be able to to learn uh, from from a job perspective and also we used to do something um, we would pick, pick a client at random and say, how can we make this client better and get the whole team involved in doing that? And I think, again, that was just really pushing, uh, pushing the team to be able to upstep their knowledge and to gain an empathy for business owners, because I think empathy is really, really critical, um, putting yourself in their shoes. So it, it really does help with, with, with driving the right questions. So thanks, Dick. Yeah, it's a great point, Ainsley. And what a wonderful thing to say is that, oh, hi, hi, Mr. or Mrs. Client. My team have spent all morning thinking about your business. Would you like to hear some ideas about how we think we can improve your business? I mean, 
that that's amazing isn't it from you know you put yourself in the client's position that they they they, they feel loved and they feel that they have that trusted advisor so i think that's a, a really cool thing to do the other thing that adains did that you alluded to here as well is i i think that accountants under undervalue their skill uh, and i know that i've i've certainly done that myself in the past when you think well um, as we're talking about here from an insights perspective, just being able to read financial reports and and explain what's happening, it comes very easy to us because we're numbers people, or we've been trained to, to do these things. Um, but for, for business owners, they may not be able to do that and they may not understand them or they just don't have the time to do it, even if they did. So I think it's really important to sometimes just state the obvious about what's going on because uh, it's still important. It's still an important insight. And anyone within the team can, can make those observations. And I think it's important that we, we pat ourselves on the back as well to a point just to say that actually we do have a great skill and we can offer great value to our business owner clients and, and make sure that we're, we're doing that and having those conversations. Cool. So the next step is planning. So what we're talking about here is working more on a strategic uh, element with your clients. And when I say strategic, what we're doing, I suppose, is more like a financial controller role rather than a financial director role, but we can also get involved there as well. So it's a combination of the two. So a financial controller would be things like preparing budgets and cash flow forecasts, business models and plans, identifying key performance indicators, and monitoring them and then from a, a finance director level we would then be applying those to the, the the strategy of the business what it is you know the overall goal the goals that you set at the very beginning with awareness in terms of where the business wants to be making sure that those plans actually line up with the the budget and the cash flow forecast and, and looking at it from a bigger picture perspective to make sure that from a high level this is what we want to we create and if we drill down into the detail that also that's the case too that it supports each other and builds on that so uh, one of the, the one of the most sensible and easy things to do here is that once you actually have a budget or a cash flow forecast is then to actually compare it with the actual results and at that point that you can easily see what's happening in the business and again this is where our, our analytical skills come in our number skills come into into play because we can see whether something's on track or not it's very easy there's lots of software available to help you do this and you can see what's going on in the business and if something isn't where it's if the variance is too big in one way or the other then it, you know it needs to be looked at because it's an opportunity to continue to uh, exploit and, and make the best of or it's a, an issue that needs to be dealt with and that's why it's so important to have financial information available quickly and with cloud technology and other technologies available to us now, we're able to do that with nearly all businesses, turn around reports really quickly. So if you're not offering that service to your clients, bookkeeping and management reporting, um, if they're not doing it themselves adequately, it's an, another string to your bow with regards to business advisory services because you then have the information to be able to advise them. Um, and the whole idea there as well is making sure that it's lined up, as I said, with the with their ideal future and that the goal setting process, you may want to get more involved here as well from a business goal setting process, maybe even a personal goal setting process as well. Most personal goals um, require money um, or time. And if a business owner is stuck in their business uh, or they haven't got necessarily the money that they need from their business, then you can help them to fulfill their personal goals by having those business goals and improving their business. So again, our analytical skills as accountants can come into play here. I, I, I would say that anyone you trust in your team could do this, that they, they have the ability to be able to be analytical, but sure, you, you may want someone slightly more senior to prepare the budget and the cash flow forecast because maybe you need a bit, bit more of a detailed understanding of what's going on in the business, but there's technology and apps out there that will help you do this very quickly um, without too much. You, know, you don't need to be sat at a spreadsheet need to spend loads of time at a spreadsheet anymore. You don't need to do that. You can use apps and connect your Xero or QuickBooks Online data, or whoever it is that you're using, you can connect those to these apps and they'll do it for you. So it's just a case of interpreting that information and having an eye on the bigger picture. So that's the main point here with planning. Absolutely, Stephen. It's, it's really interesting, isn't it? Because there's a, a couple of issues some, that I, I wanted to, to, to pull out here. One was that 
um, oftentimes we found that business owners lacked potentially a little bit of vision. Or when you put them on the spot and said, where do you want to be and where do you want the business to be? It kind of is a really big question that they maybe haven't had time to sit down and think about or formulate. When you ask them that, they kind of take a step back and go, oh, I don't know. But it's very, very interesting when you change that question slightly and say, well, what do you want personally in five years' time? And they say, what do you mean? Well, where do you want to live? What cars, you know, what, what schools do you want to send your children to? What cars do you want to drive? And to cost out their financial future is a really, really good starting point because that shows, well, hang on a sec, to do that, that needs 100 grand or 250 grand or whatever it is uh, of net income to support that lifestyle. Um, and your business is here. <laughs> And it's a big gap. And how are we going to help close that gap? And then that starts maybe the conversation. So actually, in five years' time, I need the business to be doing that. Well, to do that, it needs to have this much revenue. And it needs to, with this cost base, that's what it needs to have. And how do we generate that much revenue? Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's easy for us as accountants to push the numbers side to drive the client's vision and to try and get them fired up and excited about their business. And the other point I wanted to mention, too, is that planning can be done simply and it can be done more complex. For certain of our clients, for example, to get them on the journey, to get them started, we used to do, which I personally hated, but it, it got them started, was last year plus 5%. Because you know, a budget with last year plus assumes that everything that went before is good and valid and that we just add to it. <laughs> and we know that that's not true because that's not the power of planning. That's not questioning why are we doing that? Why are we spending that money? Why are we using that channel for marketing? How are we using that process? Why are we... Uh, going after those, uh, you know, that product line when that's making a loss, we should be looking after this product line. Um, but, you know, even just doing last year plus five, 10% certainly is a very, very powerful first step for a small business. And if they're not doing any budgeting or planning whatsoever, then we can do that. And as you said, we can do that. And the front line team can do that so, so quickly with the apps that are out there. They can take the data with APIs from QuickBooks and, and Xero. And, use those apps to be able to just quickly turn those numbers and it's done in five, 10 minutes tops. And that number, can, those numbers can be put back into their management reporting framework. So even holding that, doing that alone, I know with a client of ours that we doubled their profits. They went from 90 to 200K profits just by doing last year plus 10% and every month questioning why they hadn't achieved the numbers that they had set themselves. And they did that primarily themselves and drove those those numbers so they got no new new major contracts no major changes to the business just doing those simple things made a, a big improvement now clearly we can get heavily more involved in planning we can create bespoke financial models and again as accountants we know how to do that inherently we know how to do that or we can use technology we can use live plan we can use um futurely flow fluidly i mean there's so many apps out there to be able to help drive that forward and to be able to, to systemize it and, and get your team involved as well so um yeah i think it's really really important and it's a clear example here how we can do it small or we can do it more evolved so we can we can match the cost of our service to what the client is able to to afford and can deliver value at each level that we do it at and it's again it's about just making those incremental changes those little one-step changes that will eventually take the business on a different journey and, and make it more successful and more cash rich. Absolutely. It's a great point, Ains. Thank you for sharing. And, and, and just reiterate that at all of these five levels, you, you can have a, a very light touch or a very involved, um, involved up your sleeve approach to helping your clients. And as Ainsley said, the point of, the point of having the, defining these five levels is so that you can actually help more of your clients open up new service lines for your firm and, and then be able to help your clients and improve their business. And, to, and that can suit whatever budget that they have available. Uh, absolutely. And the one other point I just wanted to, to make, Ains, as well, which you, you mentioned as well, just to reiterate, having a, clear, having a clear direction means that you're focused on a particular goal. So that's why people set goals, is that they have a focus, because I, I really do believe in what Tony Robbins says, where, where your focus goes, energy flows. And what that means is that wherever you're focused, that's where you're pulling your energy towards. And that's, that's where all of your, um, all of your energy is going to work to make that happen. So by having clear goals, as Ainsley said, if you want to have 200,000 or 250,000 pound personal income for that lifestyle, that's, that's a pretty motivating goal to have because there's certain, there's certain uh, emotions behind that and, and certain things that the, the business owner will be have and do with that money. So 
uh, you build the business from there and you can build it from profit backwards if needs be as well. And you inst instead of starting with what's in um, the P&L and balance sheet, you can actually reverse engineer what the business needs to look like uh, and, and do some financial models. That's a little bit more involved, but again, if you're going to go, if you're going to roll up your sleeves and, and help more, then that's another approach too. So we're on to the, the fifth and, and final level of the, the five levels of business advisory. And this one, as, as we've spoken about previously throughout the, this web event, consulting. So this is where you get more hands on and you have deeper analysis and deeper insights and you actually use your business acumen and business experience. So this will tend to be delivered by partners, uh, by senior members of your team, because they have that experience of working with clients or working in their own businesses. Uh, so they can actually give more insights and deeper analysis to understand what's going on. And, and the approach here, the, the difference I, I wanted to make a, a comparison is consulting is actually where you do it for your client. Uh, and and they, they don't necessarily do it themselves. So there's varying degrees of consultancy. But you'll, you'll do an element of the work for them. So you might not necessarily do the improvements, but you'll do the work that is required to help them improve their business rather than as a business coach, for an example, you're, you're helping them do it themselves because you're holding them accountable. That's the main difference in my view between coaching and consulting is coaching the client does it and you help them from a distance do it and consulting you roll up your sleeves to varying degrees to actually help them you're in there with the trenches with them helping them improve and grow their business and so what we're saying here is that you're actually making change happen uh, and it's going to going to be again dependent on your team's experience and your experience within your firm of how much you do and what types of clients that you work with and this tends to be the bigger ticketed items so this is this you may be doing some of this already you know your thirty thousand pounds a year work or whatever price the bigger tickets items you may be doing some um, virtual finance direct work which potentially could form within uh, consulting as an element of that within planning as well uh, but some of that could be part of consulting so the the point here being of all of the five levels this is the only level that really requires that business acumen that business experience that comes from being a business owner or being a partner or being a senior manager of helping lots of different businesses throughout your career, all of the other levels can be delivered by your team. So this is the only one that requires that level of, the, uh, of knowledge and experience. Cool, but that's not to say that the, lower, the, the, the more junior members won't get involved in consulting projects. It's just that it will be driven primarily by the, the owners and managers. And I think it's really important to mention here that when people think advisory, oftentimes they default to, oh my God, I won't be able to do consulting because I don't have the experience, analysis and skills to be able to do that. Well, we're saying there's a whole heap of, uh, of steps along the way that you can add value at each one. It's not necessarily jumping in at consulting. And you know, as you gain more experience and understand more, you'll be able to do more. So it, I think it's it's a it's a great way of just you know when people say well, how do I get involved in advisory? Well, we've shown you step start at the uh, at step one and and move your way up. And I think as well, it's really really important that you do it for your own firm too. And I think we need to highlight that when you've done it for your own firm, you understand the issues and challenges that you had, uh, you know, and understood what the client will be going through. And again, having empathy being able to put yourself in their shoes and understand why they're, they're thinking, oh God, this is a whole involved process. I'm not sure I want to get in, you know, I want to spend the time or money or effort. And it's about showing them the value and showing them the value at each step so that they take the next step up to the next level. Great. Thanks, Steve. Absolutely. And just to add there, by doing it yourself on your own firm, that gives confidence. So you can actually say, well, actually, I, I've done this. So I feel that I can actually help my clients with this. And it gives credibility too, because you can speak to your clients and say, well, actually, when we implemented this in our firm, this is what we found. And this is what the results that we got. So it gives credibility too. And so that, they, that the business owner client knows that you're not just talking theory, you've actually experienced this on a practical level. Uh, and within the consultancy, as Ainsley mentioned, what will happen is you'll, you'll probably do an element of all five levels because we said that the levels build upon each other. So you will need to start somewhere and you will start at awareness. So you'll go through those five levels as part of that consultancy project. And as Ainsley mentioned as well, that your team can be involved in that. So only, only you as a, a senior manager or as a partner 
need to spearhead it uh, and deliver particular insights once the, the rest of the work's been done within the project. Cool, so then we should now see, yeah, we've got a summary of the, of the five levels there. So just to remind you, so we have awareness, so that's understanding where your client is now, where they want to be, and identifying that gap and helping them to, to bridge that gap. Accountability is holding your clients accountable to make sure that they do complete the tasks when they said they were going to do it to get to their ideal future. Insights is having that uh, understanding of what is possible and what success they can have, what others uh, success, uh, what other people are experiencing as success and how they potentially could bring that into their business, what numbers they can improve and how. Planning is going deeper and understanding on a more detailed level uh, your business strategy, business models, cash flow forecasts, budgets, uh, KPIs, and uh, not just identifying them, but checking them and, and checking th those uh, plans to actuals so that you can see if you're on the right track. And then consulting is rolling your sleeves up and, and getting into the trenches with your clients to help them push their business forward with your deeper experience and insights to, to help them facilitate that change. So what we wanted to do now was share with you some examples in terms of how you can actually use this within your firm and deliver these to your clients because it's all well and good saying, well, these are the five levels of business advisory. Now what do I do with them? Okay, I need, how, do I, how do I have these conversations with my clients? Um, what, what do I charge? What's included? You know, I, I, I don't understand what packages we can create and so on. So what we wanted to do is, is we created some suggested packages. This is based from our experience of delivering these types of levels of service um, and, and from price points as well that we feel are more than reasonable. So they're suggested packages. So that means that you can take these and play with them and do whatever you want with them. And the suggested prices are what we feel is a good value proposition for your clients, but also for, for your firm. So you may want to play with these as well. I would suggest though that you don't go down, that if you wanted to change them, that you feel you can deliver more value than you can go up by all means. But I would say use these as, as a minimum starting point. And, and with pricing, um, it's always, it's a conversation starter. So if the worst case scenario happens and you're having a conversation with a client and you tell them the price, and, and if they object for any reason because of the price, it's just a, what that, that, that client needs is a little bit, they are basically saying, I don't understand. I don't understand the value or I don't understand why the price is that. But basically it comes back to value because it's a, an exchange of value. They're paying you something for some, something in return. So if they don't understand the value, them saying, oh, the price is too high or it's expensive, it's just, they just need to understand the value more. And if they don't, then potentially they're not the right client for the service, but yeah, just keep doing your best, just chipping away. And if you feel, if, if they say to you, you know, if the price was lower that we, we would do business together, it's up to you then to decide whether you reduce the prices or not. But I would, I would say, don't, don't do that. Stick to your guns and use these suggested prices. It's, it's just an information exchange. And the more you speak to your clients, the better you'll get at demonstrating the value. Um, and, and just to point out as well, you can actually deliver certain aspects of these for prospects as well. So with the awareness package, as I say, as an example, you could, if, if you're meeting a, a new client, a prospective new client, you could get their numbers from zero or QuickBooks, uh, calculate the seven key numbers, play with the numbers of the future, and, and then and create an action plan in the room with your client you can actually do that or your prospective client, or you can do that beforehand and, and then show them during the meeting so that they can see what is possible working with your firm. And if you calculate it, say five minutes, say it's an extra 50K of profit and that you can help them achieve that, then um, I'm pretty sure that as a business owner, you, they would want to work with you. you having identified that that's possible uh, and, and played with those numbers with them to make that happen. So going back to the suggested packages and prices, what we've done is here, as you can see, we've created five different packages to suit the five different levels. So you can play with these as much as you want to, but we wanted to make it as simple as possible and easy to implement within your firm. As you can see, awareness is six monthly going through the numbers, so where they are now, where they want to be, and calculating that gap and creating an action plan, and then having some monthly support potentially on and making sure that those um, action tasks are completed uh, and if they need any help with um, in implementing them into the system, sharing some knowledge maybe or sharing some articles to help them do that. And the accountability builds on that so you can see that each 
each level like the steps builds on each other so with accountability you can see that that includes accountability calls each month um, and again the the idea just to, to go back to the price uh, i would i would be astounded that if if no if, if your business owner clients didn't find value in that's less than 100 pounds a month that you're able to deliver that type of support and service to your clients so that awareness level you see the, the suggested price for accountability is 157 pounds a month and then for insights again we're looking here going in a little bit more detail so there's more time with the clients so we've got quarterly meetings here where you're going to interpret the information and explain what's possible with the numbers and how to help them and include some benchmarking and analysis there as well and then we're planning again we're building on the previous work but then we're adding in budgets and cash flow forecasting again using apps use leveraging technology as Ainsley mentioned those those results from accounting today all of those things to be able to deliver to your client you need to be able to leverage technology because of you, you and your team alone aren't going to be able to do that without leveraging technology so use technology to create those extra uh, reports and help them get that greater insight and help them with the plans uh, and track their key information uh, and then compare those actuals month as monthly actuals to to the, the budgets and the plans so that you can see that they're on track and then consultancy is whatever you want to include basically so you know to be able to help on, on a more detailed level um, and we would suggest that you start that right from anywhere from a thousand pounds per month plus so it gives you a good understanding of of where to go um, or what you can what can what can be done um, but if if you wanted to actually um, start somewhere what I would suggest is have a look at accountability so pick a pick two so offer accountability and then maybe offer planning so there's the two in the middle that just give you something to start with if there's too much choice then a decision may not be made so if you start with accountability as a base point to help your clients and then if for those who want a bit more in-depth help then they can go onto a planning uh, package and then um, you know leverage technology to make all of those things happen and see what you're suggesting with the uh, with the uh, first package is that it's not six monthly number of reviews it's uh looking at the numbers twice a year basically. yes sorry yeah if the, if the language doesn't uh, reflect that yeah it's looking at it on, uh, on a six monthly basis so you look at it twice so, a year basically so you look at the numbers twice a year and then you just give them and are you saying it's a support call, not not an accountability call so a support call what's the difference between the, the accountability call and the support call yeah, my, my definition would be so accountability calls, making sure that they, they do what they're supposed to do and helping them through any obstacles that are coming up. I'm sure that there may well be some excuses and you, you just need to hold firm and, and make sure that they do what they're supposed to do and, and, and call them out, basically, when they're talking BS or excuses. Um, but from a support perspective, that's with a, a particular existing action task that needs to be completed. So that may be just talking it through with them so again you don't need to understand how to complete the action task yourself let's say it could be um, cross-selling um, to existing customers to raise revenue um, you don't need to know how to cross-sell but if that is the action task it's asking us if the client's stuck well how do I cross-sell so what well, what other services do you or products do you have to offer your existing customers so it's again asking questions around the task so that the client comes up with the the answers themselves so that's how i would differentiate between the two uh, excellent and so we're, we're saying we might we might do this free for the first time so we might just say i've just introduced a new service uh it's because uh, clients have been asking me and um it's it's something that we we feel very passionate about delivering and now with technology the way it's moved it enables us to do this for you so we've just introduced this new service and i'd like to take you through your numbers and you could maybe do that at the year-end accounts meeting or the pre-year-end meeting maybe or you know not necessarily have a specific call for it but maybe having a specific call would be the right thing to do because that shows the client that you're really thinking about them and saying I'd like to I'd like to show you and show you what you're leaving on the table um, and what you're missing and how we can help you maybe extract that value from your business and I think that's a really good way to start you might do it free and then say was that valuable would it be helpful that we did that twice a year for you you know and just position it that way rather than saying oh my god how am I going to explain to all my clients that I'm now doing the service um, or how, how do I get them to take the service up? So it's just maybe selecting five clients to do it with and seeing how it goes and then saying and getting testimonials uh, from those clients and then rolling it out across the other client base. Absolutely.
Great, Steve. So sure, uh, I'm conscious of time, so uh, we've got uh, only a couple of minutes left. So I just wanted to perhaps maybe uh, talk a tiny bit about Clarity and if you want to get more information about Clarity. So the Clarity platform we launched last month and uh, you know, we focused on, on version one and three key areas, which was helping business owners get a clear understanding of the numbers and their performance drivers in their business, helping them understand the seven key numbers. It connects directly with QuickBooks and uh, Zero, so it takes the data via API and very cost-effectively enables you to, to show the seven key numbers, uh, what differences and movements in those will do to profit and cash, and then about how helping you create an action plan to go about doing that. It's also got a step-by-step -step business development uh, guide and program to create a world-class business, all structured around an online data room, which is where blockchain comes in. It provides uh, trust reliability uh, for the actual data that is stored in that data room to reduce due diligence costs and, and help business owners get access to cash and funding that they need to exit and grow. Um, you know, the, the benefits for small business of that is a better business advice, information all in one place, helping them understand their numbers and generate a strategic plan that can be uh, created by any member in the team to be able to help the business grow, become more valuable, and get access to the cash and funding that they need. And from a small business, uh, you know, from a, an accounting perspective, it's cutting down the time on, on setting up so there's no uh, time consuming setup. It can be worked straight out of the box. It'll help you uh, give easier trends, benchmarking, and KPI analysis. It'll help you uh, give better business advice for your clients and be able to scale that and, and cascade it down through the ranks to be able to scale it, as Steve said, giving you additional revenue streams and, and hopefully as well giving you a practice development program for your own firm. So if you want to arrange a demo, uh, please get in touch with, with us and we'll be able to take you through that. Um, and uh, we, we, we'll, we'll uh, do that either face-to-face -face or you can join any of the webinars that we've got running uh, for that. Hi, Hi sorry, Ainsley. Hi, sorry to interrupt. I've just got a question from Robert. Um, just um, a couple of minutes ago, should we price separately from the compliance or include it in the total price? So I think, sorry, this was just back with the um, packages and pricing slide. So, Yeah, I don't think there's any right or wrong answer there, to be honest. I think um, what often happens is with bundling, we tend to get uh, scope creep or we tend to get the client maybe not understanding the true value of everything that they do. Um, so maybe for the start, you might want to price it separately. Um, I know certain firms like we, as a firm, we embedded advisory into every single, every single client got advisory at every single level of the firm. And so it was always bundled in. But I think um, I am sometimes reluctant at bundling um, in that it just gets lost in an overall fee and potentially that value it gets lost. Now, I know certainly um, in the latter years at Teobali Tomlin, we used... Um, uh, you know, a, a, a proposal um, software and app, which was very, very uh, strong. Um, we use practice ignition and go proposal. If you're if you're interested in looking at either of those, um, and um, they're very, very strong at being able to show and demonstrate the value you're doing. And because they're easy for the team, our team uh, used to do those uh, renewals and and um, extra work orders that were generated from those. And um, I certainly felt that the, the bundling in was, was a manageable process. But I think to start off, you probably need to identify it differently. I certainly would look at uh, demonstrating the value first that you're going to deliver before you show them what it's going to cost so that they can see clearly that they're getting far more value than, than what they're paying for. Um, and again, we know that people are looking for, um, for, for a cost-effective solution. That doesn't mean they're looking for cheap. It just means they need to understand the value that they're getting from you for them to be able to say, actually, I want to spend that money. And what we're trying to say here with this five steps is we want clients to take the next step all the time so that they're not going in at £10,000 consulting fee or I'm going to do a strategy session for five grand. We're saying we can actually help you here generate some revenue, you can see the returns, and now you can see why it's important to actually spend some more money doing a proper budget or taking the next step or making the next movement with us. So it is really not about going all in. It's about saying to the client, look, let's see, let's just get stuck in. And that's, that's what we used to do at Tape Body Tumblr. It was like, we want to do this for you, but let's just start the journey. Let's just take the first step and let's just do this and see what happens. And just doing this and seeing what happens means the client goes, ah, oh, I didn't realize how powerful that was. Let's, I agree, let's, let's move to the next step. And clearly this is where testimonials from your, your team and even just a prospect call, a conversation to say, rather, we're not going to sit at this meeting and, and 
talk to you about remuneration planning or structure or tax or anything like that. We're just going to say, this is what we can do for you. This is what a difference we can make to your business. This is what we can do to the bottom line. Where do you want to get to? How can we help you go there? Would you like to work with us? And I think, you know, um, sorry, it's a long winded response, Amy, but I would potentially start off with not bundling it in. And maybe as the client moves with you, it becomes part of the bundle, but I think it gets lost unless Steve has any particular uh, contradictions there. No, so no, I completely agree, Ainsley. I think it's a great step is to start separate because it, you know, potentially it's a new service line. So you want to distinguish that as a separate thing as well. And as Ainsley said, show the value first, start with those few clients, show the value first, then talk pricing afterwards. Uh, once they've experienced the value, and then, uh, I mean, I, I think you should be, if you're not using um, a, a proposal software for pricing and for uh, proposals and seeing proposals signed and letters of engagement sent out, I think you should be. Uh, and what that enables you to do is instead of bundling them in as packages and then having them set up, you know, the, what we've suggested is, um, you know, are packages to get you started. But as I mentioned, pick them apart and put them individually into your proposal software and get your client to choose what they want. I think that's the important thing. And that's what the, the, the clients, in my experience, the, the clients will value uh, the service more because they, they've chosen the bits that they want rather than having to have a prescribed service level. So that's something else to think about as you progress. Fantastic. Oh, well, thank you so much uh, for everybody. There are a few questions we haven't got to. Um, on, I'm just conscious of time. So we will come back directly on those questions. Just to thank you all for your patience. Uh, today, we've ensured that for everybody who's attended, that uh, we've given a, a, a child protection from being trafficked, or particularly a girl being protected from being trafficked by giving her an education for a day. So thank you very much for that. If you want any more information, um, please, uh, we are across most of the social media platforms. So at Clarity underscore HQ, um, we'll get you into any of our social media platforms. And you know we share a lot of information and knowledge there please go to our website, which is clarity-hq.com. And if you want to read a bit more detailed background to uh, where we were and see our white paper as to where we're going uh, as an organization, what we're trying to do, then you can you know, go to clarityproject.io and download the white paper there. So please get in touch if you've got any more questions or if you want to arrange a demo of Clarity and see what we can do to, to help systemize and scale business advisory throughout your firm. Um, I hope you have a lovely day and thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.